I remember I was um, talking to this girl one time, man, and she told me uh, she didn't circumcise her son because she thought it felt better or some shit. So that's like some crazy shit, too. You ain't get, get your, you got your son walking around with the elephant trunk. This, I don't think feel like this is like white people. Just like more of some, like some cultural shit. Like, you know? But. Oh, no, that's white people shit. It's like Danny Brown show. Sit back, relax your eye ready now. Why your mates do the yows? It's like Danny Brown show. We about to get live. Let's go. It's like Danny Brown show. Sit back, relax your eye ready now. Why your mates do the yows? It's like Danny Brown show. We about to get live. Let's go. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, yo? Coming to y'all live from Wyoming Studios, it's the Danny Brown Show. And it's your boy. <laughs> I got the Booth Boys with me. How y'all fellas doing, man? Great, yo, Danny. Yo, yo, what's good up, to see you, Danny. Yeah, what's good up? to see y'all too, man. It's a new year. Y'all what's got up? some resolutions going? Um, mine's just to be more focused, really. Like, singularly focused on something. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I said my, my New Year resolution, man, I think I'm finally going to get on stage. I say at least once. I'm gonna, I'm oh, gonna, yeah. shit. Yeah, I'm going to have it. to, man. Yeah, I've been I've been locking in, man. I'm, I've been trying. I talked to Tom. He's like, man, you got to get on stage, man. So I feel like, man, you keep, you know, when you got motherfuckers like that that you really respect, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least to try it out, Yeah, man. everyone's so, been saying it, man. I know. I mean, I feel, I feel, you know, I'm going on tour soon. So yeah, check me out, you know, the Quaranta tour is going on. So I feel like that could be like a little, you know, just a little practice doing some stage work. I mean, I always, because I, I, I never really talked during my shows. I watched this um one Ramon set. I used to always watch this one Ramon set. And motherfuckers would never talk. Every day just jump right into the songs and shit. You know, because there's nothing worse. I feel like people be like, you know, just talking too much on stage. Like, nigga, I came to pay to see you rap. I don't want to see, you know what I'm saying? I play music and shit. So I don't know. What about you, Any? You ain't got no resolutions, man? Uh, nah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be a pickleball uh, all-star. Yeah, I know, you know man. I'm, I'm I'm sorry, man. I know I was supposed to tap in. Yeah, you the didn't pickle show up. What I'm, happened, bro? It's just been, I don't know, nah, man. You've you been dealing with crazy shit, man. You'd have, like, interviews every fucking day. It's just been day. stressful, man. It really has been, man. I can't even lie. I mean, it's getting to the, I mean, I, I, I do do interviews every day, phoners and shit. And it's just been, I don't know, man. It's been stressful, kind of. It's a good problem to have, man. You're blowing up. I mean. You get it right. Doing great. It's just a part of the process, man. I've actually already started working on the next album. That's really what I've been fucking. Goddamn. Tapping in. Like, you know, finally got, you know, I feel like I finally got my home studio in order. You know what I'm saying? So it's been kind of fun. I'm back in love with the process again of just, I don't know, just being creative and shit. You know, like, I feel like I, I, I forgot how. You know, I could I could be having a bad day or some shit, and I'd be like, "Fuck it, I'm just going here and try to you know record a song or make some shit." And then you make some dope ass shit, then it's like it, it just made your fucking day go great. Like you're like, "Oh shit, I got some shit." So I've been having fun back doing that. I, I started playing fucking Baldur's Gate, <laughs> which I said I wasn't about to pick up a fucking long ass fucking game again, man. After I haven't even finished all the fucking long games that I've been fucking playing, but it, I seen it kept getting all these fucking. Best game of the year awards and shit, you know? So I was like, I'm at least try to tap in with it. And um it's fucking great, man. Like I've never been like a fucking um Dungeons and Dragon type of motherfucker, man. But I act cause I mean I love role playing games. So I really like the fucking um just the aspect of like rolling a dice and shit and you never know what the fucking outcome gonna be and and then I, I feel like that give it a lot of like replayability because you know what I'm saying? Like just to I don't know. So but I haven't been playing with other people. I've I've heard that it's it's better to play with a with a party. So, all y'all motherfuckers got my steam, man. Tap in with the boy, man. Help me out. Let me carry me through this motherfucker. Cause I've been getting fucked up by owl bears and shit, man. This shit been it's been really hard, man. So, but yeah, I I haven't to be honest though. I haven't really been playing as much. Cause like I say, I've been fucking tapping in, man. I've been feel like I'm just going to the next level of making beats and shit. So it's been really fun, man. And plus, now we got the new Bruiser Wolf albums out, man. I'm pa I'm happy. So please go check out Bruiser Wolf album. Um, my stories have stories, you know. So tapping in, man. So yeah, hit me up at the Danny Brown Show. That's Danny at the Danny Brown Show dot com. You know, you can always leave a message, send me messages and shit. You know, freestyles or whatever. All right, we gonna hop into some of these ask Danny's. First up, we got Dead Mom Dildos. Ask Danny. 
yo, Danny, I've been seeing this new girl and she told me that she's having, oh, well, hold up. I've been seeing this new girl and she told me that she's an only child and her mind passed away about a year back. She had to clean out the house and stumbled across three or four sex toys. So to this day, she has been using her mom's vibrators and dildos. How should I feel about that? How do you feel about that? Should I cut and run or embrace the freakiness of this bra? Kenneth, I don't think that's freaky at all. I think this bitch is disgusting, man. I mean, dead mom dildos actually sound like a, a, a lit ass horror movie, though. You know what I'm saying? But no, this is a really broke bitch. In some sense, man. How much do sex, sex toys is cheap, man? You don't really got to spend that much money. I mean, that's just crazy, man. I don't know. Maybe she feels connected to her mother in a higher form or something like that, man. But using the dead mom dildos, that's um, that's just going too far, man. And plus, you know, I feel like sex toys are always um reinventing themselves. They got new shit. I mean, who? how old is her mind? What kind of shit is she using? This could be like some... It's just disgusting, man. So, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't... I would run fast. This is nothing freaky about this. This is, um, that's dark, man. That's really kind of demented. She's, um, and plus for you, man, you a nasty motherfucker too. For How did y'all even have that conversation? How did y'all even get to the point of where she can tell you something like that? Like she a little too open. That's something that you, and then when she, if, she, if a bitch would have told me some shit like that, I just would have bought her some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, hold up, bitch. You ain't got to be using your dead mom deal those. Look, I'm going to hook you up, man. You can go on Amazon. You can just send her some shit. You know, you don't have to be, y'all don't have to be going through this. That's that's just like trauma right there, man. That's something that I would have never been able to look at her the same. So I don't know, man. That's, um, yeah, I, w- I wouldn't fuck with that bitch no more, man. That's just, that's just crazy, man. That's, um, even just like weird, like if you know, I mean, certain people just, I'm always weird with death, man. I, I can't never really handle it well. So even like if someone died that I was real close to, like they close and shit, I wouldn't want to even be around it. Like stuff like that is just, I don't know. I would be sad. Like, I don't know. So that's just weird. All right. Next up, we got Snip the Tip. Hey, Danny and Abuv boys. I'm European, so circumcision is weird to me, except for religious reasons. Okay, still weird. But this got me thinking, do black people in the U.S. circumcise? Shout out Sweden. Ali or oh, Al. Um, yeah, I think niggas, yeah, I don't know, man. Niggas ain't walking around with no elephant trunks. The motherfuckers get that shit snipped. I mean, that's just, I think that's just like a common thing in a hood. I don't know. But yeah, I ain't, I remember I was um talking to this girl one time, man, and she told me um she didn't circumcise her son because she thought it felt better or some shit. I was like, this bitch, see this back to the, like the dead deal though, bitch, man. That's, that's like some crazy shit too. You ain't get, get your, you got your son walking around with the elephant trunk just because you thought, another motherfucker it's just weird i was like bitch you weird you know it was, it was a weird time man so yeah man i think um i don't know maybe that's just like an american thing i don't know i think they as soon as you get pulled out they snip that motherfucker like i don't know it ain't like you got a choice you know like but so yeah for the most part yeah um but why you even care about some shit like this though <laughs> for one thing like i don't know what made you just like get on your computer type and send this message in like man i wonder these niggas getting their shit snipped man because I like to have it a little trunk on my shit. I like that little extra, extra meat. I don't know, man. No, niggas is, that's just crazy, though. I don't know why, why would you want to ask me something about that, man? But, um, shouts out to you, man. All right. Next up, we got the easy way out. What's up, Danny? I hate my job and I don't want to do it anymore. But it's an easy commute and benefits are good, so I don't want to mess it up. At the same time, it doesn't pay enough and I'm so bored of a life. I'm planning on selling drugs. It seems like a good way to get extra money and spice things up. What do you think, Teresa? Definitely selling drugs is not the way to go. I, I feel like selling drugs is like a, um, it's not like, you know, back in the day, man, shit was a lot different now. It's like, you know, with weed being pretty much legal everywhere and I'm, I'm seeing in a lot of places they fucking coke is getting legal and shit like that. And I don't know, man, selling drugs is it's, it's just not really. It's kind of dead end at this point, unless you like fucking around with fentanyl and shit like that. But I ain't, we not, I'm not saying do no shit like that. I mean, fentanyl kills people, man. So you don't want to even, cause yeah, you get extra charges and shit for that shit and this and that. But selling drugs is not like a fun thing to do, man. Like working a good job with benefits and shit. I mean, obviously there's a lot of people that's doing work and that they not happy with. And that could be very stressful and very, you know, so, but I, w- I would say, like, try to line something else up. But don't just quit and go willy-nilly out and just go rogue, you know? Like, you got to try to figure something else out. I mean, I don't know, man. Just, just um, 
Because that is the American dream, I feel like. To be able to do something you love and to be able to make money off of it and support yourself. That's like the American dream. And I know a lot of people are working, you know, jobs that they hate, man. But for the most part, man, it's, that's, the, that's life, man. I, I've definitely been broke and been wanting a fucking job and definitely been in a situation of fucking working a job that I didn't like, you know. But I would definitely say working a job that I didn't like was way better than being fucking broke all the goddamn time, you know. So I would say just try to set something else up, man. But I feel like, man, nowadays, man, with with online shit, like, bitch, start only fans, you know. If 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 you might as well sell the monkey instead of selling the drugs, man. That seemed like a um, easier way out. If anything, man, you know, you can start only fans. I mean, I don't know. I we ain't seen the way you look though, because that got to be the um, the most stressful shit in the world. Bitch, be like, fuck it, man. I'm down. I'm about to start only fans, and you don't really be looking like that. And that motherfucker. <laughs> Bitch, get two subscribers. Be like, damn, man. I'm out here showing whole asshole for free now at this point, you know? So, yeah, man, I would say, um, you know, just, I mean, it's stressful out here. Get some food stamps or something, man. The government will take care of you. Get an EBT card or something, man. I don't know. I mean, women, man, you can find you, find you some nigga. I don't know, man. I, that's a really hard one, you know. Dating a mom. Hey, Danny, I'm a 22-year-old guy from Alberta, Canada. I recently started to hook up with this new waitress I met at a bar. I think we have a real connection. The only thing that threw me off is that she's 32 and has a 7-year-old son. It doesn't change how I feel about her. Do you think that is a good idea to pursue a woman in a relationship? Do you think it's a good idea to pursue a relationship with a woman 10 years older than I am and have a kid? Brody, I mean, yeah, that is crazy, though, 22. And then... How old was she? She 32, so she's 10 mm. years older than him. It is a nice age gap, because that means she was 22 and you was 12. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I don't know, man. Seven-year-old son. Um, I mean, if, at the end of the day, you care about somebody. You, don't, you know, age and shit. I ain't saying it don't matter. You can't be fucking out here being on no creepy shit, but I don't know, man. That's um. I mean, maybe you, you're so young, though. At 22, you ain't trying to settle down or really. That's the only thing I would say about it. At, at her age, she might really, you know, trying to really lock it in, you know, and you still out here having fun. You ain't really experienced that much in life and shit. So I don't know. I would say have fun because, you know, older women, they putting that thing on you. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a whole different ball game, but you can't be playing around with older women, though. That's one thing about them, though. It ain't like they ain't out here trying to have fun and shit, especially her. She got a fucking kid and shit. So I don't know, man. I don't even know how that came across. Y'all had to meet on, on fucking Plenty of Fish or some weird shit like that. That's some that's some internet shit going on, Tinder or something. I don't know, man. But nah, man, I, I would say you're still young, man. I mean, you probably shouldn't be, you know, dealing with um someone that much older than you. You know, maybe like 25, 27 or something like that. But 32, you know, once you're in your 30s, man, you ain't trying to play around. So she might be really trying to lock it in with you, man. So if you ain't really trying to lock it in, and you got to understand, man, when you're dating a woman with a child, man, you, you kind of, you know, you about to be next up a stepdaddy. If you ain't ready to be no stepdaddy, you know what I'm saying? You better um, figure something out, man. So um, Canada's a crazy place, though, man. I've um, been watching those um, fucking Vancouver videos. The motherfuckers be, um, I don't know what, what it's gotten to me since I've been sober and shit. I'm always watching like Intervention. <laughs> I watched the fucking like, uh, I watched like eight hours of Intervention one of these days, man. Motherfuckers be fucked up out here, man. Like, and then I, it, so I guess my algorithm has like changed. So like I'm watching like the Kensington videos and like Vancouver, man. And I've been to Vancouver a lot, man. And um, I didn't know it has gotten that bad in recent time, man. But Vancouver is looking crazy out there, man. So, or even like San Francisco and all those kind of videos and shit. But Alberta, where's Alberta? Alberta's not, that's like more in the east. Is it? I don't know. Don't get me. I don't, I'm, I'm, I am I suck that geography. So I don't know. I feel like I've, oh. Is it close to Vancouver or is it? Yeah, it's more towards the west. Yeah, okay, I figured, okay. But yeah, um, I've been to like Nova Scotia, all that shit, man. It's going to be a great time. I'm happy to um, get back out on the road, man. So I'm going to be in Toronto 
and Vancouver. Always have fun in Canada, man. Canada is, um, I mean, you know, being from Michigan, man, Canada is not like too far off. Like, it's just, I was just, you know, I got to, I got to chill, man. My, 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 my YouTube algorithm has been, it's been all over the place, man, since this new year started, man. Cause at first I was, I was on, I was on a path to greatness, man. I had like Greek mythology videos and like, you know, self-help shit. You know, and then it just went to shit, man. I, I started watching, like, all these fucking drug intervention shows and shit. And then I was back watching fucking low-cow shit, man. Um, fucking King Cobra teeth is fucking falling out. I watched this motherfucker eat a um, a double Baconator. He ate a double Baconator with um, chocolate caramel on that motherfucker, man. And then he's been drinking his mead. The fucking me has been, I mean, his teeth has always been fucked up, but now you can just tell, like, every time he bites something, you can just see it getting to him. He'd be like, ooh, mm. you know, so King Cobra, man, his teeth about to fall out and shit. He's, it, it's just been going crazy, man. Cyrax has been starting to pop back up. He's been gone for a minute, though, man, so it's been kind of boring out in the low-cow streets, man, but um, Cy Cyrax is starting to um, pop back up, man, so it's good to see him, man. I'm, it's never good to see Cyrex. I'm not saying it like that, but I've I've been bored far as that world, man. So it's good to see you know things are ramping back up for the new 2024, man. So um, hopefully we get some rage. Hopefully we get some rage from him, man. All right, what's the easiest choice you can make? Me, window seat over the middle seat every time. Outsource some business tasks you hate. What about selling with Shopify? Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million order stage. Shopify is there to help you grow from their all in one commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. It's really great for any just up and coming, starting out business, man. Shopify can really help you grow. Owning a business is hard work especially staying organized and keeping track of your growth. Shopify is giving business owners everything they need to take their businesses to the next level. Sign up for $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash Danny B, all lowercase, to shopify.com slash Danny B. Now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in, go to shopify.com slash Danny B. One in five Americans have learned a new language on their bucket list. If that's you, make 2024 the year you finally check it off the list with Babbel. Be better in 2024 with Babbel, the science-backed language learning app that actually works. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in little as three weeks. Babbel is great, man. It's some fun that I can do on a plane. And of course, you know I want to learn a new language. Living here in Texas, you got to learn how to speak Spanish. Babbel has over 10 million subscriptions sold. Plus, all Babbel's 14 language courses are backed by their 20-day money-back guarantee. Here's a special limited-time deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at Babbel.com slash Danny Brown. Get 55% off Babbel.com slash Danny Brown, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Danny Brown. Rules and restrictions may apply. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner to the NFL playoffs, is bringing you offers that help make the playoffs electrifying. New customers can bet 5 bucks on any game and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. DraftKings is really great, man. It's fun because you can bet and, you know, it's like watching a game inside the game, man. So you can always put down money on your favorite players and get to see a return. Download DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code DannyB. New customers can bet just 5 bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code Danny B. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsibility gaming resources next up we got the doom of shroom what's up danny i had my cousin come by to hang out for the weekend and take some chocolate mushroom bars we got from oakland 
I'm 25 and he's about the same age, but he's special ed and awkward as fuck. So I started offline, then looked at me scared. It all started offline. Then he looked at me scared and said he doesn't feel right, so he called his boy who was a therapist. I've always felt bad since that day, and more shit has happened in his life since then. I feel like I might be the cause of it all. Am I the fault for his bad turn of events in his life? Love you, boys. Keep him high and tight. Vic. I don't know what you mean. It all started offline. But uh, chocolate mushroom bars, man. I, I mean, you know, mushrooms, man. You know me. I had my own uh, fun with mushrooms, man. I, I went strong a whole summer with the motherfuckers, man. I actually, I, I told you I found, I had so many shrooms, I actually found the bag not too long ago, and I had gave them away, but, um, yeah, man, shrooms, I don't know, what do you mean? I, I don't, he looked at me scary, doesn't feel right, called his boy who was a therapist. I don't know, it sounded like he's starting to try to get his life in order, man. That's what it seemed like, because them mushrooms, though, they do, they do have you on some other shit, man. Every time, um, you know, like, like, I don't know, man, psychedelics is, it's a slippery slope, I feel like, because, you know, a lot of people microdose. Because I've seen people with microdose, and I was like, damn, my nigga, you was better than what you was before you started doing that shit, man. Now you want some bullshit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they feel like it's helping them and shit, man. So I don't know, man, but I don't know. I, I could never do anything. That's how I know I was a fucking addict. I was just fucked up. I could never do shit in small doses. I always got to take it to the next level. But, yeah, those chocolate mushroom bars and all that kind of shit, man, that shit is fucking legal and shit now, man. That shit is... um. That shit is fucking crazy, man. Like, um, so yeah, man, I don't know. But maybe, I don't know, maybe it seemed like he's starting to get his life in order. He went to holler at a therapist, you know, but you saying, I don't know. I don't know, man. The Doom and Shroom, that sounds like a fucking horror movie as well. But, um, for the most part, I would say, man, um, if anything, man, just don't do shrooms with his ass no more if he weirded you out, man. Just uh, <laughs> keep that shit to yourself, man. I don't fuck around with shrooms. I mean, obviously, I'm not fucking around with nothing no more. You know, it's just been, but it, it has been hard, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. Around this fucking, um, lately, I've started being like, man, I wish I want to smoke weed again, man. But I've definitely been keeping strong, man. I would definitely say that. Cause I've been like, you know, I, I think it's what I'm coming on like, I think it's almost like nine months, 10 months, something like that. And it's just getting to the point where I'm like, oh, I think I got it. But you can't never get too overconfident, man. So. I think I think that's what led me into starting to watch Intervention and all that shit again. <laughs> and it's like, nigga, you, do you want to go back to this? And it's like, nah, fuck that shit, man. But yeah, man, I think I um I had smelt some weed or something one day because I don't, you know, I'm not around it. Like, don't nobody around me smoke or, or be doing shit. But I think I smelt some weed one day and I was like, fuck that shit, smell good. And I want to smoke weed again, but I'm I'm definitely not. I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it tight. I'm keeping it high and tight. All right, we got some white people shit. What is this? Um, chasing cheddar. White people shit. What's up, Danny? In England, they have an annual event where a bunch of people sprint down a giant hill trying to catch a large ten-pound wheel of cheese. It's called cheese rolling. This has to be some white people shit. I'd love to know your thoughts, Ben. Cheese rolling. Y'all know about this shit? I think I've seen some shit like this before. This I don't think feel like this is like white people. Just like more of some like some cultural shit, like you know. But oh no, that's white people shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, white people shit. In USA, you're not gonna tell me you come here. As Multiple injuries. Look at this motherfucker. Damn. So tell us why you both wanted to come and do this. So she's the one that. I was the one that uh, carried her with me um, five meters after I can't remember nothing of it. Yeah. No, I just, I'm dusting my eyes. I'm so they got to catch the cheese, the winner. Yeah. But you've got a bit of an Yeah, I don't know if they're trying yeah, to outrun yeah. the cheese or what. I just my ankle a while ago and then I hit the same spot again. Just now. See, yeah, I just don't see the appeal in this. I don't, I don't see the, what's the, um, like, you know. I feel like this is like something that's been going on. This is like ancient time games before they had PlayStations and shit. Before they had the internet or something like that. Like, fuck it, man. Let's just chase some cheese down a hill, you know? But damn, I feel like a lot of these motherfuckers is just falling on purpose. But I don't know. This hill might be on some crazy shit, though. It do and look like they're falling on purpose. That's what some I'm thinking, them. too, immediately. I'm, I'm like, But no, nah, you know them motherfucking, them, them, them motherfuckers be in the pub all day drinking them pints. They probably drunk, you know what I'm saying? And they get they get out. Look at this motherfucker right here. 
<laughs> I remember we was uh, when I was a kid. We used to always go to this park, like all, always, like um, like around Fourth of July and shit. And they they had a, a a crazy ass toboggan hill, and we would race each other down the toboggan hill. And somebody would always fall and fuck themselves up. So maybe it's just I don't know. I think that's the um. That's the appeal of it. It's to laugh at motherfuckers falling and fucking themselves up doing this shit, you know? Yeah. I mean, as far as me, it, it seems entertaining to watch. I would love to go to one of these events and, and watch motherfuckers fuck themselves up. That would be the fun part of it, if anything. But I don't, it didn't seem like anybody was trying to get the cheese. It just seemed like. I think that it's the first person down the hill and it says that their prize is the cheese itself. Oh, fuck that cheese, man. I don't want no cheese. I've been bouncing on no dirty ass hill, man. Right. But yeah, no, nah, they fucking itself up though. This hill got to be crazy. Oh, look at him! Oh, like is the cheese worth the medical bills? I mean, you might be the man though. This got to be like one of them, you know them small. Some of them like I, I've definitely did my time around the UK, and some of them motherfuckers be like some small like country ass towns. I remember one time watching walking to the Tesco. And a sheep just walked out of nowhere. I'm like, what the fuck? Y'all just got sheeps walking around like fucking, um, it, it was like how you see a dog in the street or something. You know how we just got random dogs and shit or cats or something like that? It was just a whole big ass sheep. So maybe this is like one of those small towns. I don't feel like they doing this. I'm like, no, oh yeah, motherfuckers is <laughs> getting <it. laughs> Motherfuckers is getting on a stretcher, all that. I, I would say, yeah, they definitely got me on that one. That's definitely some white people shit, man. Um, chasing cheese down a hill is not something that I, it's on my to-do list, but I, I definitely would check that out. I, I, I wouldn't want to search this on my YouTube. I already told you my algorithm is already going crazy, so ain't no telling what's going to pop up after you start searching for shit like that. All right, we got some freestyles. Let me hear you bust a freestyle. Definitely want to see some motherfuckers spitting some bars. People always hit me up like, yo, I sent my freestyle in. Why y'all ain't watching my shit? I mean, I don't know, man. This shit probably was fire. We are, <laughs> that's probably I'm from what it a is. little town of white people showing no teeth, permanent B.O., stinking on the J.O.B. Anytime they speak, you know they're preaching with the slow speech. Their only critical race is NASCAR with theory. That's what they don't teach. And if you know me, you know I make fun of everyone, even the obese. <laughs> I get on stage and get big claps like Liz cheeks from old people getting hammered like Paul Pelosi. I'm joking. Comic, I just want to tell a couple jokes. Think about myself and be hella difficult. Therapy better help in my health and my growth. Would I have the talent without a chemical imbalance in my mental health? To know these bitches out here trying to sell me a dose. Ketamine head just fell down a hole, came after the K. Like L M N O, that girl poison like Belva DeVoe. Smile with the, uh, I could tell she a pro. Body kind of looking like an El Camino. Stay in your lane. One thing I hate about people when they embellish the roles. Talking to, hey, I'm going to shut the fuck up. Danny Brown, my name's Comic, a.k.a. Joey Hamoud. If you ever need anything cool on social media, let me know. I make a lot of shit for Hans Kim. I'll give you my information. Peace. Goddamn Hans Kim. No, this is actually kind of fire. It actually reminds me of like some old rap that I used to listen to as a, as in my uh, you know, two thousand Def Jux phase and all that kind of shit. He remind me he could have been like been like on Def Jux or some shit like that. But they no, that was actually kind of fire, man. Shouts out. What he say his name was? Joey Hamoud. Joey Hamoud. Shouts out to Joey Hamoud. That was actually dope, man. You can rap. You can rap. You a rapping motherfucker. So yeah, shouts out. But uh, fucking Hans Kim. Yeah, I see y'all motherfuckers at the uh. I ain't see, I ain't get to see you. He's at the fucking kill Tony shit. Oh me? Yeah, and he ain't see you. I, I seen this motherfucker right here. Yeah, fucking Tony ass. <laughs> Damn man. Nah, yeah, I was uh, I was handling the broadcast, so I was super yeah. busy the whole time. That was yeah. dope, man. It was it dope was, to see you though, man. It was fun. I didn't even know you were gonna be there. They were su they were keeping everything super top secret, so I didn't even know what the show was gonna be about. So yeah, they, they were like, oh yeah, and then Danny Brown's gonna make an appearance. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, what the hell? I, yeah, I fucking Tony ass. He asked me to come through. I'm mm -hmm. like, I just wanted to come through and hang up. I'm like, can you do a song for me? You know how you say <laughs> He's like the fucking, like a, a evil demon or something. I'm like, can you do a song for me? I'm like, all right, man. <laughs> so I did it. But he actually, yo, he was like, oh, I was, I was kind of pissed though. Cause this motherfucker was like, yo, I'm a, um, you want me to send you a car? Which I could have drove, you know, I got my car out here and shit. 
So you want me to send a car? He sent me this fucking um, crazy ass party fucking sprinter and shit with a fucking big ass TV in it, blasting some crazy country music and shit. You know, my girl, she was like, oh, this is dope. She had a good time. But then after it was over with, I, I did tell him that I was going to hang out with him. But my girl, she had just flew in from New Orleans and shit. So she was tired. She's like, nah. And then plus, I, 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 I forgot that it was New Year's kind of. And then motherfuckers be shooting guns out here, man. They, yeah. was, I'm fucking, um, they was fucking Yosemite salmon out in this motherfucker. And I was like, oh, man, I don't want to be gone. And then ditto in a house and shit. Motherfuckers get to shoot and scare. He's like, all right. I'm like, man, can you get, give me a car back? You know, this motherfucker just dipped on me. I see them too. Dipped on me. I was left stranded in that motherfucker. I'm like, see, that's why I'm fuck with these comic motherfuckers, man. Scumbag Tony. Just, just left me stranded. Shouts out to William Montgomery. He's the only nice comedian in the world. <laughs> Thanks, but thankfully, he was there. and He was able to get me a ride back to the crib because it wasn't about to be no Ubers. I looked on Ubers and you had to walk like somewhere far as fuck. I was like, see, that's why I knew I shouldn't have even did this shit, man. But shouts out to Tony and Kill Tony. It was a great night, man. Seeing yeah, you, him. You killed it too. Seeing him doing shit at fucking stadiums and shit, man. That's crazy, man. But but yeah, I was pissed. I'm like, this motherfucker. But all right. We got another one. Yes, this is Saber. You'll lose your life when you see me right. I don't even like or care who you are. Get crucified like Jesus Christ if you think you're brighter than a superstar. If it isn't clear that I've been sincere, you bring your feelings and in insecure. Listen here, or end up formerly known as an artist like Prince was here. You carry your rhyme book, you'll get your life took if you're a deadly MC. I'll make you hang yourself with your own sheets like you were Jeffrey Epstein. I run with a gang of brothers with angry mothers on their family tree. You're about to die, shot to death on the set like you were Brandon Lee. I enjoy the loss. You can try and get your point across, but it won't be flying. Cause eventually homies dying on that hill like Kobe Bryant. You know I'm finding it kinda hard yeah. to rock the mic uh. with passion still. Cause I'm freebasing the same shit they claim that got Michael Jackson killed. I see you're next to meet your death. You'll sleep and rest with DMX. You'll be impressed and speaking less when I reach the dead through EMF. So take these words home and think it through. Or the next rhyme I write might be about you. I ain't gonna lie, I believe this motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, you know, gangster rap, like, I, I ain't even gonna say nothing bad about this shit. That shit was dope, man, because this motherfucker looked like he would kill a motherfucker, man. Like, you, he looked like he would, he's the type of motherfucker that would really kill a motherfucker, man. Like, he's been playing with guns since he was seven or some shit, man. I don't. I don't trust these kind of motherfuckers, man. He got that, uh, cause my girl, she be always watching them fucking, uh, evil fucking, them fucking, um, I don't know, man, them fucking ID shows and shit where evil turns and all type of motherfuckers like, they, they look like this nigga, man. It always be motherfuckers like this, man. And they be like, oh man, he got made fun of in the fourth grade and he could never let that shit down. Went back and killed every classmate 10 years later. Like, nah, man, I ain't got nothing bad to say about you, brother. You are. You're great, man. Um, just, just stay out of, man. Please, all right. I wouldn't want to see this guy after a bar in the alley or some shit like that, man. You know, he just, it's crazy, man. I wouldn't be surprised if he stormed the Capitol, man. Like, <laughs> leave that motherfucker alone, man. That nigga is scary, man. All right, man. You can always hit me up, man. Send me fucking messages. You know, ask Danny's white people shit freestyle videos. Hit me up at Danny at the Danny Brown Show dot com. Always, you know, it's always a fun time getting to kick it with you motherfuckers, man. So, um, shots out. I love you guys, man. We about to get up out this motherfucker. We're going to spin the wheel one more time before we get up out of here, though. Y'all ain't got pluckers on there, man. Damn. I've been Think loving the, the gift. last time. I know, man. They've been giving me the gift cards, man. Finger skateboards. I will say I, I've definitely um, went down a um, rabbit hole of this shit, man. Um been on YouTube watching this shit all fucking day and shit. I, I guess you can kind of, um, it, it, this could be um on some white people shit, but it it is dope though, man. You get uh, fucking entranced in this shit, man. But I, I've, I've watched a lot of, oh man, I, not the off whites. I've, I've, but I have watched a um, lot of fingerboard skateboard, man. And I actually thought like, you know, when you see shit sometimes you're like, oh, that shit don't look like it's too hard. No, this shit hard as fuck. Oh shit, this nigga doing grabs and shit? 
That nigga got the extra strong jack off hand. That's all that is. I ain't, I'll usually see niggas doing flips and, you know, I ain't seen a nigga just doing grabs. Can you imagine being at the skate park and seeing one of these niggas shoot one of these videos? I'd be like, dog. Grinding and shit. The fucking, the white skinny jeans is killing me, though. But yeah, this this is um that's that's really a talent, man. I'm I'm um I'm actually surprised is that I mean I'm pretty sure they got fucking um uh, finger skateboarding competitions and shit. They got to. This shit's too big. This shit's too big. I actually got caught up in man, I was watching fucking um air hockey tournaments and shit. I didn't know air air hockey had their own fucking like professional league and shit. So I'm pretty sure this shit on some same shit like that, man. But yeah, fingerboarding. Yeah, I, I I thought it was easy, man. I, I tried it. I, I actually had me a um a fingerboard. I didn't get all crazy to the point where I'm buying rails and shit like that, but I had bought I had bought a fingerboard one time. And no, nah, man, I couldn't do that shit. My, I got little ass hands though. I, I feel like you gotta have some big hands to do that shit. I think they have finger scooters too. How they do that shit? Uh, why they they buying shoes and shit now? Like they killing it with the accessory game, man. How they got the finger J's, <laughs> bro? Oh shit! <laughs> he actually dope, though. <laughs> Damn. So yeah, I just don't want to get caught up in that, man. That I mean, certain shit, man. You know, a bitch asks you what your hobby is, and you're like, yeah, you bitch. You know, I'd be doing finger. You know, I'd be doing finger scootering. Bitch be like, what? I don't know. Bitch might see this shit get turned on. Like this nigga might got the, he might got the ill finger action for me, man. So I don't know, man. I guess it is a good workout for your hands and shit. But yeah, I, I think it's dope. I, I that's something I, I, I mean, like I said, I tried it. It's hard. It's not something I can do, but it is, it is fun to watch on YouTube. So yeah, but yeah, we out of here, man. Love y'all, motherfuckers, man. See y'all, motherfuckers, next week, same time, same channel. You already know what it is, man. Peace. Love y'all, motherfuckers.